class, we're going to be talking about uh, fixed assets. Fixed assets are those expensive things that you purchase for your business in order to operate your business. Okay, so it's things like buildings, trucks, cars, computers, equipment, machinery, anything like that. Um, now, these items, when you purchase them, it's not just the cost that you purchase them for. If you have to pay taxes, that gets added into it. If you have to pay to have it transported to your place of business, that gets added into the fixed, uh, fixed asset. Uh, if you have to pay to have it installed or get it up and running, those costs go into the asset price. So on our books, we'll have it at not just the price we pay, but the shipping price and all those other costs, taxes, tariffs, whatever it might be. Now, you're probably thinking, well, so what? Who cares about that? Well, it does matter because you've got to remember that buildings and equipment and cars and trucks, things like that, they depreciate in value. And that's what we're going to be doing in this chapter. The first part of this chapter talks about a fixed asset and the costs that go into the fixed asset. And then it turns around and says, okay, how do we depreciate this? Okay, I've got some information up here. We're going to go through an example of depreciation. And unfortunately, like inventory in the last chapter, there's several depreciation methods. And we're going to talk about three of them in this, in this lecture. We're purchasing a truck. It has a cost of $65,000. It has a salvage value. We think it's going to be worth five thousand at the end. So this sixty-five thousand, this is all the cost. What we paid for it, taxes, transportation, you know, the freight to get it to us. Uh, there were some things to get it up and running. Whatever, all those costs came to sixty-five thousand. At the end of the life of this truck, we think it's going to be worth five thousand. At that time, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to estimate that the life is five years. And you're probably thinking, where did we get these numbers from? Just our best guess. We've got to do our best to try and figure out how long do we usually keep these trucks, these cars, these vehicles, this equipment, how long do we keep it? Well, in this case, we're saying we normally keep our things about five years, at least this truck or trucks like this. And we estimate the salvage value would be 5,000. So in the first year, if we purchase this on January 1st, and now it's December 31st, how much are we going to depreciate this? Well, we're going to, we need to depreciate it from 65 down to five over five years. So we're going to depreciate in a total of, we take the difference here, a total of 60,000 over five years. So that would be $12,000 a year. Okay. Now if we purchase this truck in December, let's say we purchased it December 1st, and now it's December 31st, we're not going to take a full 12,000 of depreciation because that would be for a full year. We would divide this by 12, the 12 months, and get $1,000 for the first year, okay? But my example was we purchased it on January 1st, okay? So we held it for the full year. So it just makes it easier for us. So every year we'll depreciate this truck by 12,000. So how does that work? Well, we have 12,000 of depreciation expense. So our depreciation expense will go up. And then we have another account called accumulated, I'm going to abbreviate here, accumulated depreciation. And that account also will increase, but it's a contra asset account, kind of like our allowance. So at the end of the first year, notice that our truck is on our books at 65,000 and it stays at 65,000 the whole life. What happens is this accumulated depreciation account offsets it. So in our first year, since we had depreciation of 12,000, the book value or the net realizable value of this truck then, the book value is 53,000, okay? Because this accumulated depreciation goes with the truck, okay? People like to see the value of the truck and the value of the accumulated depreciation separately. So that's why we separate these two accounts, all right? I hope that makes sense. Now, it's called accumulated depreciation because what's gonna happen next year? It's going to accumulate. What's going to happen is we're going to have another 12,000, so this will be 24,000. In year three, it's going to be 36,000. And then 36, 48, and then in year five, it will be 60,000. So 65 minus 60 will get us to 5,000, which is our salvage value. Okay, see how that works? The, the chapter goes through a good example of this also. Make sure you go through that carefully. Okay, so that's what happens with accumulated depreciation. The depreciation expense that we recognize each year will just be expensed on our income statement, $12,000 every single year. 
It doesn't accumulate because expenses don't accumulate. You just have the expense of 12,000 this year, then you'll have another expense of 12,000 next year, and then another expense of 12,000 the following year and so forth. But the accumulated depreciation is, is an asset account. It's a negative asset account, but it's an asset account that reduces the truck so it keeps accumulating its balance year after year. Okay, so that is the straight line method. It's very simple because it's just a set amount of depreciation each year. Okay, now we're gonna go into what we call the double declining method. This one's a little bit unusual. What we do is we don't start with 65 minus five, we start with the actual 65. Whoops. 65,000. Now, it's double declining. Well, how much did we depreciate under for five years each year? We depreciated 20%, okay? Because 20% five times makes up the 100% of depreciation, okay? So, we're gonna depreciate uh, twice that. So, you could do 40% or, this is the same thing, say one over five, because it's five years we're depreciating it, but it's double declining, so it would be times two. You, you double that, okay? That's a little bit confusing, but that's how you do it, okay? If we were depreciating it over four years, it'd be one-fourth times two, because you're not taking just one-fourth of it, you're doing a double declining, okay? So in this case, that's 40%, okay? So 40% of 65,000 is 26,000. So that would be, if you're keeping this for the full year, if you purchased it on January 1st and you have it the full year, you're gonna have $26,000 of depreciation the first year. Now a lot of people like this method better because there's more expense up front. And isn't that what usually happens to cars and vehicles and items? Don't they depreciate more at the beginning? Okay, so this method looks at what's really happening a little bit better than the straight line method. The straight line method, it's, it's advantage is that it's just so easy. It's just a certain amount of depreciation. It doesn't change every year, okay? Well, this is for the first year. What's gonna happen in the second year? Well, we're gonna use the same calculation, but we're not gonna take 65,000 because it's not at 65,000 anymore. It's 65,000 less our accumulated depreciation of 26,000, so it's only at 39,000. So 39,000 times 40% will get us 15,600, okay? So under the double declining method, you have the same numbers here, but this is gonna keep decreasing. So next year, this 39,000, you'll take that less the 15,600 to get your new amount in order to depreciate. And you'll keep doing that. At the last year, in year five, you're gonna depreciate it down to exactly the 5,000 left, okay? So you don't keep doing this every year for five years. In the fifth year, what you do is whatever's left over, you have to get to the 5,000, okay? The textbook has a really good example, so make sure you go through the example in the textbook, okay? Because it goes through um, all five years or four years, whatever the example is, and shows how you get it in the very last year, okay? So now we've talked about straight line depreciation. I've showed you how you do the double declining method uh, way of depreciation. There's, for tax purposes, unfortunately, there's another method. It's called makers, and it's the way that the IRS allows you to depreciate your equipment. And the textbook goes over a little explanation of that. You're not gonna be calculating that, but it shows or explains how makers works and uh, explains how the IRS has calculated these things, okay?